as are many people have pointed out, that these coins are there. They've got birds on. The birds are on the Tatarian flags. The birds are on the dances. Yes, it's on the dancing. People used to talk to birds. This history has been deleted. Anyway, um, to make it simple, um, first you can see um, women in Russia um, wearing headscarf, traditional clothes. Yes, you can call them Russians, call them Tatars, call them, call them whatever you want. Many of them have emigrated to Israel and they call them Israelis or children of Israel if they're Jewish. Many of them who are Muslims, they just call them Tatars. Many of them who are Christian, they call them Russians. Now there is a picture from Kostroma. Yes, you can see where these places are, and then you can check the old pictures, even in the Republic of Komi or Mari, you will see there is a similar fashion. And when you look at the people, it's not about genetics, they all look the same. Now then, many people are turning around and talking about, I can't believe the Russians were Tatars and they mysteriously became Russian. Now, because um, um, your friend Farooq is from an Indian background, I gave him an example. Bangladesh, they're Bengalis today. Um, 50 years ago, they were called Pakistanis. Um, 100 years ago, they were called Indians. What are Bangladeshis? It's a serious question, yes. Yes? You yeah. know this story. Um, Bangladesh was um, <clears throat> Pakistan. Um, um, and then um, the Uzbeks. There are Uzbeks in Moscow. Yes? They're all over Russia. You can find them in Novosibirsk and many other cities. Wherever you go, Katrinburg. Well, um, you'll find them. Um, Uzbeks go to work in Moscow. Moscow is like the city of dreams for um, Uzbeks, Tajiks, and many other people in the region. Yes, um, <clears throat> it's a big city. It's like, um, you know, New York is seen to many as like a city of dreams. Yes, or Vancouver. Yes, to work after you've graduated in the big, big offices. So now the thing is, um, the thing is, uh, many Uzbeks who travel outside Russia, they will say, I'm Russian. They've got a Russian passport. Are they Russians or are they Uzbeks? Many Uzbeks are, are um, um, called Turkistanis. Yes, because um, even in the United Nations, many reports show that this region is called Turkistan. Yes, um, the Uzbeks, um, many people call them Soviets. Many people call them communists, but they said we were not communists, we were Muslims. Were they Soviets? Were they Russians? Are they called Tatars? Are they Mongols? So these are terminologies people invented. Now, the next picture, um, I've sent you is, um, what do you call it, Russian coins. Now, many people, you can call them Tatar coins. These are in the area of Muscovy. Muscovy, um, you know, um, according to official history, you know, um, um, uh, the, the, um, the Duchy of Moscow. Now, what we see in these coins, it says, the seal of the great princes of Moscow have inscriptions in Arabic. What's going on here? Yes. You know, are they Russians or are they Tatars? It doesn't matter. Same like you can call them Bangladeshis or Pakistanis or Indians. Yes. Uh, many people um, say if you are from Scotland, they call you English. But they will insist we're Scottish. Or oh, then they'll say you're British. Oh, no, you're from United Kingdom. Some people call the entire United Kingdom London. Yes. So, uh, so these definitions, um, you can say whatever you want. But throughout Northern Europe, we've got these coins there. Call them Russian coins, call them Tatar coins, call them whatever you want. Yes, they've got Arabic writing without a doubt. Yes, and then, and then what we can see, um, we can find many of these coins in Moscow, uh, in Moscow museums, in the Kremlin museums, and many other places. Yes, after the 17th century, professors like Fomenko pointed out that, um, what do you call it, um, that many of these coins had one side Arabic and one side the new old Slavic lettering that was introduced after the 17th century. And we still see Arabic inscriptions, but what we see is images of birds. Many people will call them dragons or snakes, but um, as you can see, figure two, on one side of the image and on the other side, the Arabic inscriptions. So we can still see it's half and half. And notice the birds. Why are there birds there? Yes, slowly they started putting princes and kings as well. But um, I've given you a, a bigger copy. It says three, two, one on this picture. You know, it's a bird. These are on the Tatarian flags. Now, these coins are found in Moscow, in Finland, in Scandinavia. They're found in the Baltics, in Northern Europe, in, in Germania. Yes, 
So they're, they're found there with Islamic inscriptions and birds. Why have they got birds? Yes, and many people talk about Tartaria and their opinions. Have these people ever studied a single Russian coin or a Tartarian coin, saying, oh, I don't think the Russians were Muslims. Oh, I don't think there was a, a great Islamic civilization there. Have they, have they even looked at a single coin? Have they visited a single museum? Have they looked at a single report of people who've actually been to see the coins? Excuse me. Yeah, this is the same like um, we hear people who are non-Muslims who are saying, ah, Islam says this or that, and they've never read the Quran. Or this is the same like the Muslims who are commenting on the Bible and they've not even read the Bible. Yeah, you know, it, it, um, you know, and the Quran says produce your proof if you speak the truth. Yeah, so then I, I've given you like documentary evidence from the 18th to 19th century where it shows European monks, yes, who came to Moscow, which was the city of the mosque. Why were monks visiting Moscow? Religious people. Yes, and they always had to write... Um, you know, like it, 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 there was a visa system, not like today, you know, like entering the city walls. And um, you could call it a letter or, or whatever. And they had to write in the Tatar language. Some historians call it Tatar language. It's, you can call it Tatar or Arabic. It used Arabic lighting. Yes. And um, by the 18th century, they had to write in Russian too. Not modern Russian, this old Slavic, um, yes, um, whoever introduced it, which mysteriously started showing up after the so-called invasions by the French of this so-called um, Napoleon and these other people. Yes, but why did they have to write in Arabic? Yeah, we, uh, um, the Muslim caliphate was never there, according to official history. This was not a, a, um, a Muslim region, you know, in cities like Nizhny Novgorod and all these other cities. Yeah, I'm sure these people who are commenting on Tadars and Russians don't even know where Nizhny Novgorod is and have probably never been there or never examined the history of these cities, yeah, or, or, or anything. Like, for example, um, in the Middle East, you've got the name Faisal or Faisal, yes? Everybody knows Malik Faisal, Saudi Arabia, King Faisal, yes? Yeah. In, in um, Russian today, you will not say Faisal, you will say Basil, St. Basil's Cathedral. They're the same names pronounced differently. So now the next image shows Alexander Cherkov. He did studies, you know, um, about, about Russian coins, which were mysteriously in Arabic. And he gives the testimony of European foreigners, or oh, most of them spoke French. Yes, and, and, and um, Paris was where the Jesuits were, were set up. So now um, all these people who are commenting on Russia and Tartary, have they studied the investigative works of Alexander Cherkov? Or have they looked at other people who've done updates and had, had a further look, um, you know, on more coins that are available today? Alexander Cherkov had, uh, had, um, had a limited mm -hmm. amount of what he could look at. And also, Cherkov, you know, um, um, was, was um, referring to, to um, West, Western foreigners' testimonies, you know, because of the French influence, you know, and the French invasions. Yes. You know, so... Um, um, the thing is, many people, they claim to know the history of Russia and Tartaria. Yes. How many of these coins have they studied? How can they turn around and say, I'm of this opinion or that opinion? Oh, yeah. And these same people are not going to drink poison because they'll check it. And now these people are going to give, give their own opinions. Yes. To say, I know what the word Tatar means or Muscovite. Or oh, today they're called Russians. In some documents, they were called Muscovites. Yes, in some documents they were called Mohammedans, the Muslims. Are they Mohammedans or are they Muslims? Some people will say, no, the terminology is not correct from today's point of opinion. Yeah, but you can call, still call somebody a Mohammedan or a Muslim, as you wish. Well, anyway, so the, so the thing is, um, let's go through Cherkov's works and other things. And many people have turned around and said, oh, it's same like saying that call them Russians, call them Tatars or call them Muscovites, the people of Moscow. Yes, Moscow means all the way, all the way down to Kiev. Yes, that region. The Ukrainians will dispute it and say, no, it's up to the borders of Belgorod. Oh, yeah, many of the people who are listening now, do they even know where Belgorod is? Yes. You know what I mean? Do they know anything about this region? Do they know anything about these things and they're going to comment? Yeah, they're just going to come out with opinions. They've just read a, a few works, you know, a few months of study, and they're just coming out with it. Oh, what are they going to say? 
the Mongols, yeah, these historians say the Mongols might have forced the people to put Arabic inscriptions. Get real. You know what I mean? Oh, the Mongols are not Arabs either. Oh, they're from uh, Mongolia with troops from Beijing. But then we can't even find this Mongol civilization. Beijing city was called Tadar city before 1900, before the British, French, Russian, and Japanese and Chinese invasion when they broke through the city walls. Most people don't even check that. The next picture shows the coins of the so-called Ivan the Terrible. Now, these coins might have been issued by Ivan the Terrible himself or by Russian princes after. Many people say they were issued after because they've got Slavic writing on one side and on the other side, they've got, clearly got Allah. Yes? So, so these things people can't answer. These are, for, are, are by Russian coins throughout Russian cities. They are the majority of the coins in Russia. So now, so if, if somebody is going to say uh, they were Tatars, then you can turn out and say the English were British, now they're English. Or the Scottish were British until independence, now they're um, Scottish. Uh, um, Czech Republic people, oh, they were Czechoslovakians. Yes. So the thing is, uh, many people who came from Ukraine during the Soviet times, people just call them Russians. I remember when Ukrainians, uh, uh, tourists came to England, um, before the Soviet Union, they used to just simply say we're Russians, many of them. Even when the Polish, yes, and um, you know, even Bulgarians, when they came during the communist era, many people used to say Russians, Russia controlled it. That doesn't mean they're Russians, the definition of these places changes. So these are not an issue. The main point of my research and other things, yes, show that there was a global Islamic civilization, especially in Northern Europe. Who cares if they were white, pink or blue, Call them Russians, call them Tatars, call them, call them children of Israel, call them Germans, Germanic, whatever you want. Yes? And, and then, um, um, so, the, so people are talking about these things. You know what I mean? Tell them to show their evidence. Yeah, and, um, and the next um, Russian documents, and not just Russian documents, it's their country, but European documents, you can find it online. There's videos. This is from um, somebody's video that I've just done screenshots on YouTube, the, and um, I put subtitles there because it's not in English. There's uh, many people who pointed out that these coins are there. They've got birds on. The birds are on the Tatarian flags. The birds are on the dances. Yes, it's on the dancing. People used to talk to birds. This history has been deleted. Then the flags survived in Turkestan, that many people will say, the um, regions that are known as Uzbekistan and other places, yeah, um, still carried the Tatar flag with the birds. But um, the Russian flag today, it still has it. Now, let's have a look at um, 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 some of these coins. You'll find these coins, you know, in the Volga region. Yes, Volga is, uh, as you're going to our central Russia, and in eastern Russia, in Siberia, and they've just got Arabic on. Yes, and then they mysteriously disappear after the 17th century. Yes, and then um, um, many people will have to read all my books to understand and listen to all my videos. The French nobility, all the way through to World War I. Yes. Not the French, um, the Russian nobility, the Polish nobility, all these people who were ruling Europe as Tataria collapsed, many of the princes mysteriously spoke French. They couldn't speak a word of Russian. Yes, it's too long to put this information here right now. Yeah, I sent two videos to show these dances of the Kazakhs. Many people will say that they are the Kazakhs of today, but um, the Kazakhs or Kozaks, they have the same dance with the birds, and then you modify it a little in Azerbaijan with the faster dancing, or um, in Europe they had it, but um, when they separated the families, it, um, it, more of it is explained in my book, Orphan Trains. Many people lost these dances, the bird dances, <clears throat> yes, of how the bird takes to flight when um, the children imitated these things. Now, uh, many Muslims are going to be septic. Oh, we're talking about King Solomon was an entire civilization. An entire civilization talked to birds. Same like we are now using computers. We're sending emails. We're flying. You can't delete the civilization. And if it's there, the evidence must still be there. Now, the thing is, many researchers have shown official history is a lie. They're lying and that the Quran is speaking the truth, that there was a civilization, that they could communicate with birds. We can find it on these flags that these people are saying this is Tartaria, or you could call it Russia, or you could call it Germania on the old German flags, on the flag of Misir of Egypt. These flags are there. Albanian flags have got it. Old Serbian flags have got these birds. You know, it's clear. We can see it in the in the emblems of the Germanic families. These birds are there. 
different types of birds. Some people will call them snakes or eagles or strange birds or alien types of whatever. You can say whatever you want, but the Quran gives you this history that nobody else agrees with, that they say this is like a fairy tale, it's been invented, modern historians will say. Yes? Now, if these Muslims are supposedly Muslims, aren't the Muslims who are supposed to, oh, they say they believe, aren't they supposed to say there was a great civilization? Oh, these people spoke to the birds, the evidence is there, they communicated with them. You know, humans are giants compared to birds. Birds are terrified. So can you imagine if hundreds of birds crowd around you? Um, the children aged 10, 15 talking to birds, the children will imitate the birds, sitting, standing, moving like the birds, copying them, opening their arms like uh, um, the wings. Yes, and these things are seen in the dances. Now, many people will say, ah, this is a Christian dance. Other people will say, you know, this is a Jewish dance. This is, um, Muslims will say it's a Muslim dance. It was a global civilization. Yes, and the thing is, it collapsed. And people divided different ways, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, you could call it many different things, Shia, Assyrian, Armenian, you know, many different things, Ashkenazi, Sephardim, you know, the many different dances all the way through from Morocco through to Siberia and from Bangladesh all the way through to England. You know, um, the, um, the Caucasian people have got these dances and they've, they've got um, similar uniforms and dress codes covering their hair and many other things. Now, there is the question, many Muslims who are defined as Quranists, but you don't have to call them that. They turn out and say the hijab or the headscarf is not mentioned in the Quran. Now, the old world civilization, when we look at the photographs from Holland, Germany, Poland, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Norway, Sweden, Finland. Yes, all the countries throughout Europe, everybody is wearing this so-called hijab. Yes, whether they are Ashkenazi Jews in Northern Europe, or whether they're, um, what do you call it, Orthodox Christians, or whether they're um, Sunni or Shia Muslims. Now, the thing is, the Quran makes it clear, um, saying that the women should cover their um, um, decorative parts, their decorations. And hair is a decoration. Women decorate their hair and change it in different ways. So this is mentioned in the Quran. Anyway, back to the thing about the Quran. So if there was a great, amazing civilization, it must have been so great that the Quran says it, it was like a blessing and um, people were grateful. Uh, it describes the great civilization that could communicate with birds. So now there must be evidence of it. The evidence is in the coins. It's in the flags. Now, if there is going to be Muslims and Christians and Jews who are denying this history that the Quran is openly claiming, yeah, then um, that's their choice. The evidence is there. It's in the coins in Northern Europe. It's in the flags in Northern Europe, what people are calling Tataria or Germanic flags. These birds are there. It's in the dances. The dances still survive in many village areas. Yes. Um, for example, we see Albanians um, coming to Europe. And um, the thing is, they soon start nightclub dances, modern dances, hip hop dances. But the traditional dances in the village where they're playing these things and um, they're imitating the birds and the sounds of the birds, what they call music. Yes. Um, you know, which is not banned in the Quran, yes, and these are uh, movements which people will call dance, but um, these village people will say, no, we're imitating the birds. Yes, this history is slowly being lost. Yes, it's throughout the world. Yes, so it shows that the Quran shows a different history. Yeah, um, if the Muslims don't agree with it, then the Muslims should declare to the world saying this story in the Quran is not true. Because the historical evidence shows that there was a great civilization, that um, birds were decorated everywhere on coins, on flags. And many people are going to say the Russians were not Tatars or the Tatars were not Russians. Who cares? The, the swords, almost all the swords before the 17th century, I'm not making it up. It's in my book, Skull and Bones. And it's in my book, The Crusades. And in, my and in many of my other books, Jerusalem is in Europe. Yes, and in um, the book Hitler and Nazi Germany, um, it goes through some details that hundreds and thousands of swords have been found, yes, and coins throughout Northern Europe, yes, that have just got Arabic writing on. We don't see any Slavic writing. Yes, if somebody's going to say Russian, okay, these people are called Russian. What does the word Russian mean? Yes, in Germany, they call it the Reichstag, Reich, Reich, pay attention. So now in Russia, it's called Rosh. In India, it's called Raja. The Rajas of India, Raja, Rashastan, Rashastan, and that language they call Roth or Rothia, Urdu, Radha. 
Yes. And then they say the Raja Suleiman was the ruler of the Philippines. Raja or Russia. Yes. And in English, they you type it R-E-X. Rash. Rex. Yes. This word was the office of the king or the ruler. That's why it's called the Reichstag in Germany. Or in, in France, it was called the Frankreich. The Reich, the ruler. That's why the Quran says we gave them the pro prophethood, the Rasul, Rosh, the office of Rosh. Rosh was not a race. The French, even in the history, we can see that they claimed um, in the fake history with Charlemagne or Suleiman or Charlemagne, they, they've fabricated the history. They say his father was, was a prototype or a copy of King David, the same story. Yes, they say that the, the Frank Reich and the Reich was over here. The Germans say no, it's all in Germany, you know, Hitler's Reich. Yes, you pronounce it how you want, Reich, 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 that or Rosh, or Russia. Yes, but pronounce it how you want. The word originally was not a race. It represented prophethood and followers of prophets. Yes, so the thing is Tatar, they made it plural. It wasn't plural, it was just Tar. And that's why even many Turkish nationalists or Turkic, Turkic nationalists are going to say Turka. We've got Seska or Cheska, Czech Republic. Ka means people. Ruski, Ruska. Rus, Ka, Ka means people. Turka, Ka means people of Tur. And even Davutoglu. Davutoglu, um, who was a member of um, Erdogan's government, yes, um, he even turned around and says, the people who were at the mountains of Tur, where Moses um, communicated with God. Yes, that's why it's called Torah. Torka. So um, that's where the origin of the word Tar or Tatar came from. And then many people call this area Turania. Yes, it's not just in Russia. That's why it's called Mediturran. Yes, it's called Mediturran or the region, um, um, you know, where the Caucasians, um, many people say there were Caucasians. The evidence seems to indicate this. But other people say maybe Moses was dark or even African. Um, you know, the, um, the man, Prophet Moses, the man who, who um, it, um, delivered the Ten Commandments and the Torah. Yes. So these things are debatable. Yeah. Was he black or was he white or was he a bit dark skinned or was he pink skinned? Yes. Um, um, with red hair and his hand became white. Yes. So these things are a different issue. But the main thing is Tatar Russia. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's just an opinion. You know, we can call them Soviets. Yes. We can call the Uzbeks, Kazakhs, Soviets. Yes. You know what I mean. So the thing is, call them Tatars, Russians. They had an Islamic civilization. Arabic was the, was um, one of their major languages. And um, because the Quran only has like a, a few hundred root words, um, that's it. So the thing is, many people had their dialects for a full language for thousands of words. So now somebody can say the Quran is actually Slavic because these root words in the Quran are found in, found in all the Slavic dialects, all. So that means the Quran's in Slavic. It's, it, it didn't, it's, not, it's not modern Arabic. Modern Arabic is an invented language. Yes. So then people will say, oh, no, it's modern Arabic. We find all these words in modern Arabic dialects. Or once again, yeah, you can check the Germanic dialects and you'll find all the words of the Quran there. So this means the Quran is written in German. Yes. So, so you can just make an opinion. Yes. A bit, uh, so these things, what I've just stated, is an opinion. The Quran is in German. The Quran's in Slavic. So these things, what are debatable, that we don't have conclusive evidence for, you can um, argue all day. But what we know is that Quranic Arabic, not the modern Arabic we see today. The basic words of the Quran, yes, that language, those words were basically found in almost all the major languages. And then people had their own sub-languages and dialects, but they didn't have the efficient, official nation-state standardized languages that we have today that were invented, yes, by linguists, masons, and Jesuits. This history is well known, not even hidden. Yeah. Anyway, I hope this information helps. And, you, and um, I've sent Farouk two videos of two dance videos. Um, w one of them um, shows a boy and a girl dancing. You can put that somewhere in the middle so that people can see. It's a work of art. This work, dance is a work of art. Yes. And then um, the other one with the, with the Kazakhs dancing or Kozaks. Yes. Um, um, you can see Muslims and Christians dancing. And you will see a woman with a sword. 
Yes, um, because the thing is, the women used to help prepare the swords and grave the swords in the villages because there was a war going on between the followers of God, or what we call Islam, and then the Vatican. Yes, because Russia represented Islam, so did Germany. Yes, and then the, and then um, the office of the Rosh or the Rasul or the Reich or, or the office of the prophets. That's why in the Old Testament, it's called the Book of Prophets. What you will notice is that the Old Testament, the Bible, has got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Basically focuses on from Adam to Moses. Then it's the prophets all the way down to Maccabees, which some Bibles don't include. Yes, and you will basically see that the rest of the Bible um, is actually about the prophets and um, um, the Mohammedans and the Crusades, the rest of the stories. And Maccabees is basically the story of the prophet Muhammad, but it, just a different version. And then you can see that it even turned around and says that the Mohammedans were the children of Israel. They are the children of Israel. Yes, they are Israel. Yes, the name has been taken away from them. Now most Muslims seem to hate that word. Yes, but um, the Mohammedans were known to be the children of Ephraim and Ephraim and um, these tribes, and they were, um, what do you call it, the children of Israel. And that's why we see, um, you know, there is strange words um, in the Bible like Hosanna, Hassan Hussein, Hosanna, Hassan Hussein. So now the strange thing is when people have a look at the Old Testament, you will see the split, the Sunni and the Shia. Yes, and the Shia, what many people will say, yeah, it was the Vatican, the imams or the priests. Yes, the priests were on one side, and then, um, what do you call it, the people and, um, um, were on the other side. Yes, so many people will say, say that, um, what do you call it, it's, it's basically exactly the same, but it's modified history. Yeah, people will say it and they can find it. When you read the Bible and check the events, Fomenko even showed it matches the events of the Crusades, the Muslims fighting against, or whoever. When I say the Muslims, people seem to imagine, you know, Arabs and Turks. I'm referring to Germans and Russians and Arabs and Turks. I'm referring to all the people. It was a global war. Yes? I hope that makes things clear. Any questions, Imran? Uh, yeah, well, there's a few. Um... But I think we'll just leave it at that, and then next time we'll, I can bring up some questions. Yeah, because uh, yeah, if, if somebody's going to turn around and say it wasn't a Muslim civilization, it was not Japanese. I don't find any Japanese coins in Northern Europe. It was not a Slavic civilization. We can't find these Slavic coins. The, it was not a Hebrew or Jewish civilization. There's no Hebrew Jewish coins in Northern Europe. Yeah, it was not a Germanic civilization. We can't find a majority Germanic um, type of coins in these regions. It was not a Latin civilization. We cannot find Latin on these coins. Not just the coins. Somebody's going to say, oh, what's he talking about? Just coins. Okay, the swords, the people's swords. I've sent videos of how, how women played with the swords and the women were also there to protect their families and the parents because many people lived in the countryside. The countryside was very developed at the time and they destroyed the countryside. I've explained that in the book, Often Trained. Slowly, slowly, it took 200 years to force urbanization. We see many similar conflicts happening in the Middle East to force urbanization, to bring them to urban areas so that they can brainwash them in schools with the fake history. Yes, the fake history includes Islamic history, which Muslim people will say are Hadith books, which are found in museums that have been opened by, um, you know, um, what do you call it, you know, colonial governments and the people who took over the administration. Oh, by the way, you go and try to open a museum in Egypt. Let's see if they will let you do it. No, they opened these museums. Yes, um, the Vatican's allies, the British and the French and the Spanish, they opened them and they put this fake history there. Yes, and if anybody is going to turn around and say, it, um, um, the Tatars, they were, um, what do you call it, you know, they were Spanish, show me the Spanish coins, show me the, uh, um, the helmets of the Russian kings, or you can call them Tatar kings, even the helmets of God Arabic, even their weaponry, everything. The weaponry is their clothes. They wore this day to day, every day. And that's got Arabic. The coins, they use them every day. It's got Arabic. So I don't know what people are talking about saying, hey, we can't believe there was an Islamic civilization. It matches the evidence in the Quran, the birds, the dancing, the birds on the coins, the birds on the flags. The evidence totally matches. Yes, that the Quran is saying this civilization was there. And then the Quran says 
hey, this book is speaking the truth. You will find this. Go, go and travel the world and you'll see how, how, how civilizations were before that came and went and others that got destroyed. You find these things in the Quran. I went, I saw, I found. Yeah. Veni vidi viki, what um, they say in fake history. I came, I saw, I can't cut. Yes, that's what they say Caesar said. Well, J.R. Ewing, this is what I, David, say. Yes. I traveled and I saw and I found. <laughs> yes, I found the evidence. So there you go. Let's leave it at that. Yes, All have right. a nice day. Thanks, David. Okay, yeah, Imran, yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye.